he mapped it. So all of our nice straight streets that go up the hills and intersect at right angles across the flats were laid out by Simeon DeWitt and his son. And they really left a mark, I think, on the, on the community. The young DeWitt charted himself a brilliant career, from the number two surveyor in the Revolutionary Army to Surveyor General of New York State in 1784 at the tender age of 28. It was a job he held the rest of his life, half a century. During those years, DeWitt acquired thousands of acres of the local land, surveying it, selling it, giving much of it away to the new community, including the parcel that today bears his name as DeWitt Park. During many a spring and summer day, DeWitt spent his time laying out the streets we use today. But in spite of all the visits and all the work, he never fulfilled his dream of making his own home here. Simeon DeWitt died at the Clinton House in 1834. DeWitt's ingenuity and generosity helped make Ithaca the delightful village it was in those early days, a community of gracious homes and thriving businesses. And in the years that followed, the combined efforts of many men and women made the village a city. But like those grand old buildings on the hill, the name of Ezra Cornell towers above all. He had um, investments all over the place. And he took the proceeds from a lot of his fortune and built the Cornell Public Library, um, certainly endowed the university, because the university is pervasive. It, it hovers over the city. Um, it's hard not to look up and see it. And it's, one, it's really our economic base in this city. If the university was Ezra Cornell's legacy, then the Cornell Library was his monument. The Cornell Library was used for a lot of different things. It was used for public performances. It was used for meetings. It was the big public building in the middle of town. The Cornell Library was torn down in 1960. As it turned out, the memory outlived the monument. Nowhere is the value of restoration more eloquently expressed than here in the Clinton House. Historically fabled, visually fabulous, it's worn many faces through the ages. In fact, you can get a pretty fair picture of the city's own history simply by tracing the evolution of this building much like examining the rings in an old tree trunk. Except for a sporty cupola on the top, the Clinton House of the 1830s looked pretty much like it does today, and stayed that way until its first major facelift during the decade before Ithaca became a city. In 1872, William Henry Miller, a local architect of note, was commissioned to modernize it. In 1901, the people managing the hotel decided that it was worth saving. And at that time, they restored the roof line to the way we see it now. Through the years, the greatest changes were not in the Clinton House itself, but in the world at its doorstep. The first telephone jingled in 1878, and the first trolley clanged in 1884, and the first automobile puttered by in 1899. The new city faced the new century with optimism and promptly found romance in the park. The teens were the time when the pavilion at Stewart Park was part of a movie studio. city was their set. They used the streets. They were common fixtures. Sometimes policemen would break up fights not realizing they were breaking up a movie fight. Um, sometimes they probably wouldn't break up fights thinking that it was. Mm -hmm. 